I shall miss that when we leave Casablanca. It's gracious of you to share it with me. Good day, ma'am, monsieur. Monsieur, good day. <laughs> You're a man, please. No beating about the bush. Right to the point. The multiverse is the idea that there are lots of different universes with different laws and constants. And physicists do have reasons to postulate that, a reason to postulate the idea that there's a, a sort of foam, as they sometimes put it, of bubbles. And lots and lots of bubbles, and we're just in one bubble. Our entire universe, our entire visible universe, is just one bubble. And there are lots of other bubbles, which are different universes with different laws and constants. And one of the uses of the multiverse theory, as opposed to the many worlds quantum theory, one of the uses of the multiverse theory is to account for the fact that not just this planet appears to be friendly to life, but this whole universe appears to be friendly to life. And this has been explored especially by Martin Rees, the Astronomer Royal and um, President of the Royal Society, uh, in a book called Just Six Numbers, in which he draws attention to six constants, the fundamental constants of the universe, which physicists at present have no interpretation, no, no understanding of why those numbers have the values that they have. They understand everything else once you've got those six numbers, but they don't understand those six numbers. So those six numbers are simply postulated, they just exist. And um, Martin Rees and others have calculated that if any one of those six numbers was just a bit different, then we wouldn't be here. The universe would hardly be here. It might be that there would be a universe where everything would be hydrogen and helium. There'd be no other, other elements. Or there'd be no stars. It'd just be a, a, a diffuse mass of, of say, hydrogen. Uh, lots of, uh, the, each one of those six constants, according to Martin Rees, has got to be just so. It, and so one could imagine a theist um, thinking of God with six knobs that he can twiddle setting up the constants of the universe. And God started out by adjusting each of these six knobs to exactly the right value in order that the universe should last long enough to bring forth life, should have stars instead of just uniform matter, that the, um, that the constant um, governing the, uh, the, the, the strong and the weak forces and so on should, just, should be just right. Well, that's the theistic interpretation, which I think is fatally flawed by the argument I said earlier that complexity can't just happen. We have to stop here to explain what Dawkins means when he says complexity can't just happen. After all, that's a little strange, because according to the Big Bang Theory, the complexity of integrated rules and constants that govern our cosmos did just happen at the Big Bang. But this scientific theory is not satisfying to Dawkins because he knows how improbable our cosmos is if there is no designer. So all through his book, The God Delusion, he keeps referring to how Darwinism should raise our consciousness on how all complexity came from simplicity. In several places, he hints that through a process like biological evolution, billions and billions of cosmos evolved until our cosmos was able to produce life. Now, billions and billions is not really a reasonable number once you know the facts. It's actually quadrillions and quadrillions. Stephen Hawking is one of the many scientists that estimate the probability of our cosmos happening by chance as extremely remote. In his brief history of time, he comments that the rate of expansion in the first second of the Big Bang had to be exactly as it was for life to be possible. If the expansion had varied by just one part in 10 to the 17th power, life could not exist in our cosmos. That means, by inference, that there must be 10 to the 17th power cosmos without life for every cosmos like ours with life to exist. Here's the math, and you can do it yourself. For the first time in history, a normal person can verify the claims of scientists because large numbers can be factored with the scientific computer on your computer, and I'll show you how. First, click the Start button, then hover over All Programs then hover over Accessories, then click on Calculator. If the calculator is in standard view, click on View, and then on Scientific. Now you are in Scientific Calculator mode. Let's figure how quickly we have to make 10 to the 17th power cosmos if we only had 13.7 billion years 
since the beginning of time according to the Big Bang Theory. First click on 13.7 billion years, that's 13700000000 times 365 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds that gives us the number 4320432000000000000 those are the amount of seconds in 13.7 billion years now divide that number by 10 to the 17th power and that equals 4.32 seconds per cosmos. In other words, if a new cosmos was made every 4.32 seconds during the last 13.7 billion years, there would only be one cosmos like ours that could produce life. So Zeke, you know what we're trying to do here, right? Yeah, yes sir, yes sir, I'm gonna shoot me a woman out of this here target. Okay, why don't you then grab that piece of paper and nail it to the barn, okay? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, now to go back and get your 12 gauge and you go ahead and shoot that first shot. Now make sure you get close enough where you can shoot you a picture of a woman, okay? Zeke, Zeke, it looks like it ain't working, huh? No, sir. No, sir, it ain't. You think you want to just keep trying? Maybe a couple hundred thousand times might work. Maybe. All right, let's try it again. Shazam! It's a woman! Sure enough, you shot a woman. Too bad it ain't. A real woman, but that sure is good shooting. <laughs> well, Zeke looked like she came alive. Shazam! Does she speak English? No, I think she's an Italian. Italian? Yeah. Like the bread? <laughs> Why is it that most scientists believe the first living cell happened by chance, even though statistically it seems impossible? I think Richard Dawkins, the famous atheist, provides the answer in his book The God Delusion. On page 114 he writes, The argument from improbability states that complex things could not have come about by chance but many people define come about by chance as a synonym for come about in the absence of deliberate design. 